this shit. take this bad, but you might want to do a free ADHD test online. Because according to research, 20% of the world population with ADHD doesn't really know they have it. I'll leave a link down in the description for a free test that you can do. It's 13 questions and while it may not be a full advice, it will give you a general idea. After you ruled out that you actually don't have ADHD, you can proceed to understand reason why you never finish anything you start. The shining object syndrome is when someone focuses all of their attention on something new and current. Usually it's at the expense of anything else you're doing. For example, you get obsessed with playing the piano and you have no eyes for anything else. Or you focus your attention on the dream or painting and you end up spending a lot of your money on gear that you think you need but you actually don't. And it's frustrating, because while it may have its pros obsessing over something and making it your focus in life, it can have its cons. With the shiny object syndrome, the cons typically outweigh the pros. You may feel frustrated that you don't make any progress or that you're just far away from your goals. You may feel that you don't have any direction, that you're wasting your time, in the end, leading to stress. But why does this happen? Why do we obsess over something and then end up quitting? My girlfriend always says that people act out of fear or passion in life. When you start a new project, you become passionate about it and nothing else in this world matters. Whether it's your new business idea, your creative journey, your sports life, anything. You focus so much on something that you end up losing sight of the big picture. And I get it because I start something new and I obsess with my entire body, my mind and my soul. I have fun. It's exciting to start something new. Do you remember when you discovered that one thing that you keep on doing today? There is nothing like that dopamine hit that you get once you start something new. And once you're there, once the dopamine fades away, you fall into a sun cost fallacy fear. You feel that you wasted a lot of your time, but then the motivation to do so is not there. And it's a trade-off between the time you already put in and the pleasure of starting something new. There is though one thing that you can do to fix this, and it starts up in your mind. Change your mindset and perspective of things. Okay, I know, it sounds heavy, but hear me out. You may feel that you wasted your time, so you end up forcing yourself to try and finish it. And you even get more stressed about it and more demotivated. You really need to understand that it's okay not to finish something, just because you started it. There's been countless times where I didn't finish a book because I got the message through, and after a while it just felt repetitive, and that's okay. Because whether you decide to finish something or not, won't change who you are as a person won't change you as a human being and will definitely will make you worth less or any more. Time is precious and while you may have the now, you don't know what comes tomorrow. So if you get bored and you don't finish something or simply it was just not how you expected it, it's okay. It's okay not to finish something. Yet, if you finish something, here are some practical tips. 
Begin by assessing your potential. Sometimes the potential impact of something outweighs the cost. People are constantly inventing new products and continuously being introduced into the market. And some of them could even be what you or your business need to get to the next level. Or if it's not a business, what you need into the life. However, you should assess the potential impact of the tool or the service on you and be objective about it. Doing so will help you identify whether the product or service or whatever you're gonna be doing will be helpful for you on your business and potentially improve your life or your business in any way. Then you might want to set better goals. And let's be real, you probably picked up the new hobby because you saw someone doing it and you found that cool. I've been there before started every sport that you can possibly think of and I ended up quitting because my goals were just too high. I started refereeing for rugby for example and I wanted to make it to the World Cup. I was just starting out so of course I would get them motivated. So go ahead set up big goals but break them into smaller more manageable goals that you can achieve today, this week, next month, in one year. Take it step by step, and the feeling of achieving your goals will help you finish your tasks and reach your full potential. You might want to limit the number of projects that you do. As a creative, an entrepreneur, or even a human being, you are your biggest asset. With all the talk about mental health and wellness, it is only fitting to emphasize that being in the right mental space is integral to your success. By limiting the number of projects running at a time, you're more likely to stay on track. It's already enough to have to balance going to the gym, with working, with family, with friends, to on top of that, add your hobbies. And actually not just one hobby, but many of them. Choose how many projects you'll do and try to avoid burning out from doing so many things at the same time. Once you do that, enjoy the journey. I know, it's easier said than done, but you need to learn to enjoy the journey. I would always start with anything new. I would start with some expectations of I wanted the re end result to be, for example. I would learn to play the guitar because I want to be able to play like this guy. And then someone down the line, I would realize that I'm not going to be able to do it as well as I wanted to. Maybe because I was lazy or I just didn't have the time that I thought I needed to invest. Or maybe even because I realized that I don't have the skills for it at all. And then I would quit. Now, when I take up something new, I decide that I'm going to enjoy the journey and not worry about the disease. Now, when I take something new, I decide that I'm going to enjoy the journey and not worry about the destination. This approach has really helped me a lot. It's not easy to make that switch, but once you start believing that this approach works, you will soon start enjoying the journey, living in the present and not focusing so much on what's to come or where you want to be. And in order to do that, I can only think of reducing your time on social media. Because while social media might be great, trust me, it's draining your energy and time. You see a lot of people that have the life you want and actually don't absorb that much knowledge, or you just scroll to lose time. If you feel like you don't have time, just reduce your time on social media or quit it altogether. You will see that once you free up some time, that you ended up scrolling a lot, you will realize that you're capable of reaching those goals you set yourself. And if you don't know where to start, I'll leave a video here that might actually help you in the process.